My name is George, and today we're at an aquarium in Korea. This is the Aqua Garden Cafe. This place has some of the best aquascapes in the world. But not only that, you can get a coffee, something to eat, and enjoy your time sitting in front of these beautiful aquariums. It's located here in the Lottie World Tower, a massive shopping center here in the heart of downtown Seoul, South Korea. I've been waiting years to see this place for myself, so let's go see all the amazing fish inside. Here at the entrance of the cafe, you have a massive cichlid aquarium. There's a huge tree trunk coming out of the center of it. If this is the first tank, I'm excited to see what's inside. You have an aquarium that leads you all the way to the front of the cafe. <laughs> it's just nuts. There's literally these massive window panes with water coming down them. Tons of beautiful, colorful freshwater fish. These huge rocks with moss on them. This is like their version of an aquarium tunnel, but for freshwater. Fog coming out of the tops of these aquariums everywhere. I'm feeling the vibe so far. All right, we're here at the cafe. Bunch of different cakes and drinks. What do you guys want? All right, so we got our order. And now we gotta find a place to sit. I came pretty early in the morning because I wanted to make sure I got the best spot. This is sweet. So in here I'm seeing sturgeon, rainbow fish, the rose line sharks, little family of Corridoras. This is nuts. All right, so this massive room divider tank, we've got a monster arowana. This red Asian arowana, the dragonfish. He's looking right back at me. I think he just said to subscribe. A huge platinum albino gar, stingrays. This one is white and then this one is more orange with spots on it. A bass, parrotfish. We got some more catfish down here. Look at this river monster, another gar. This is so impressive. Over here, we got all these fancy goldfish. Dude, this is so cool. Over here, we got some piranhas. This tank is polydarium, red belly piranhas in here. These actually might be yellow belly or orange piranhas. Look how yellow some of the bellies are on these. Maybe they've been feeding them too much. They got a little danger, don't touch sign. I need one of these in my house. All right, looks like our order is ready. So uh, let's go pick it up. Thank you. That looks insane. Time to find uh, the best seat in the house. So many options to choose from. They're obviously not your average aquarium. Every single one of these is really like a piece of artwork. That's how I view it. All right, chose my spot in front of this beautiful aquascape here. Because we're at the world's best aquarium cafe, I wanted to try a few things. They call this an ice blue latte and then an aqua yogurt smoothie. Drinks are gonna cost you about seven or eight dollars each. For here in Korea, that is pretty expensive. The bingsu. This is a traditional Korean dessert. It's basically ice cream, shaved ice. This red stuff is beans and the stuff on top, it's really, really yummy. Bingsu cost 22,000 Korean won, which is about 16 US dollars. These are the kinds of aquariums that you would see in aquascaping competitions. Even the tanks are branded as Aqua Garden. That's pretty sweet. This little Pleco, trying to get some of my Bingsu. All right, I love this aquascape, but I'm kind of impatient and I wanna see all the other aquariums in here. Let's go take a look around. This tank makes you feel like you're in a national park, specifically Redwoods National Forest. They took a bunch of logs and placed them vertically all throughout the tank. It makes it feel like an underwater forest. There's also guppies and platies in this tank. There's also some cherry barbs, which are these small, all red fish. Then they also created this stream with the sand that makes you want to walk down that path. They're using moss on the rocks down here. It even grows all the way up the logs. Some of the fish in this aquarium, we have a bunch of tetras, rummy nose tetras, cardinal tetras, and then there's a huge school of ember tetras. The ember tetras are these ones right here in the middle that have the orange streaks in their body. Those guys are all schooling together. Really cool. Okay, so in the center of the cafe, I think this is the biggest aquarium in here. It's taller than me. We got red rainbow fish, blue rainbow fish, and really big angelfish. 
It's gotta be at least 5,000 gallons. I'm not entirely sure what this thing in the center of it is, although it's probably just a base pillar for the building that couldn't be removed. Instead, they built the aquarium around it. Whatever's in here, they actually sealed it off. We have this huge school of angelfish. They seem very curious as to what this American is doing inside their cafe. Um, I'm just here to visit, guys. I will leave a good review on Yelp. Over here, we got another arowana. Wow, look at the purple coloration on the top scales of this arowana. Oh, and here's another one, but I believe this is a Jardini arowana. Down here, we have this really cool pleco. Tons of like monster fish in here, huge Oscar. Usually people throw these parrot fish in their aquariums just because they're really easy to take care of and they add a lot of color. I'm vengeance. But these are a type of catfish. I really like these. They got really short bodies, super tall, long dorsal fins. And then we have an albino white Oscar. So many fish, they all look really healthy, happy. I hope they're not feeding these fish cake. I mean, they look good. By this point, I was already super impressed, and I thought things couldn't get any crazier, but then they did. There's an aquarium that goes all the way around the entire cafe. All right, this tank right here is gonna be your plant lover's heaven. So plants can actually come in shades other than green. You can get reds and oranges and yellows, which I think when you put them all together in a tank like this really shows the full spectrum of what you can do with aquarium plants. This tank is full of schooling Hemigramus blairi. The more common name is the rummy nose tetra. This tank is also loaded up with shrimp. Just look at all these shrimp down here. It's a shrimp rave. It's a shrimp rave. It's a shrimp rave, shrimp rave, rave, rave. Why are these shrimp raving? It turns out they've discovered Raycon's wireless earbuds, the sponsor of today's video. The best wireless noise canceling of earbuds. Shrimps in the tank, they're feeling alive. Rave with Raycon, it's a vibe. Bass in the water, the bubbles go boom. With wireless sound, we light up the room. Little shrimp crew, they groove in the light. Rave all day, party all night. Raycon buds, the quality lasts. 30 day guarantee, no questions asked. In the sea or on the street, Raycon wireless, it's hard to beat. Bluetooth smooth, no tangle mess. Found some beats, no need to stress. Sweat or splash, buds don't quit. Water resistance, they handle it. 32 hours of battery all day. Affordable buds, they're here to stay. Raycon wireless earbuds are absolutely the best earbuds you could possibly buy. This is also not George's voice. This is the shrimp speaking right now. But I do know that George uses these everywhere he travels to on the airplane. He, he can't live without the active noise cancellation. And us shrimp absolutely love to rave to the Raycon earbuds. You can click the link down in the description. Buyraycon.com slash coralfish. And you're going to get 20 to 50% off. Enjoying the rave. It's a shrimp rave. It's a shrimp rave. Shrimp rave. 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 Now back to the tour. I feel like it's a little bit of like a choose your adventure. All right, in this corner, we've got stingrays. These are black diamond stingrays. The stingrays are so cool. Look at their eyes. They almost look like they're marbled. Oh my God. Hey, buddy. Another huge arowana. I can't wait till the day that I will finally get stingrays. It's gonna happen, guys. It is gonna happen. Another awesome planted tank. I can only imagine how much bacteria is being stored in the substrate. It's gotta be at least six inches of substrate, which is really good. It's like what you'd find in nature. There's a lot of soil that is holding all the bacteria in here. Plants and wood are coming out of the tank. I could sit here and get really deep about what these aquascapes mean, but sometimes they don't mean anything. They're just really cool to look at. And usually a lot of these aquascapers, their end goal is just to recreate nature in a glass box. When you use really small fish, you can do some really cool things with the depth perception. Really teeny tiny little freshwater fish and teeny tiny little shrimp make the ecosystem look that much bigger, so much more lifelike and realistic. We got a bunch of spiderwood coming out of the top of this tank. Looks like down here, this pleco is uh, at his own little guppy cafe or platy cafe. I could sit in front of this aquarium all day. This is the kind of that I absolutely love. 
So almost all the tanks do have like a little plaque on the top right corner with the name of, I believe, who aquascaped it. Huang Yuji aquascaped this. So much dimension, dwarf hair grass. Then you got some Anubias and at the very back, big long plants, these little pillars that look like they're tree trunks. Am I the only one that thinks this one is one of the coolest? Which one of these tanks resonates with you? Drop in the comments. Okay, this long set of tanks has a bunch of koi, goldfish, and cichlids. Most of them are butterfly, platinum, white koi swimming back and forth. This definitely seems like a popular area. People, I think, really seem to love the koi, which makes sense because they are one of the friendliest fish. There's also some huge turtles up here just chilling on these logs. I don't know if they're comfortable. Hi, koi. I love how this turtle right here is using that one as his sleeping bag. Over here, we've got some diamondback terrapin turtles. Very friendly. They're poking their heads out of the water. Say hi to YouTube, turtle. Oh, and then over here, they got a little platform where they can bask under the heat lamp. Just turtle things, I guess. This tank is filled with a bunch of figure eight puffers. They're called that because the pattern on top of their bodies looks like an eight. Many puffer fish are actually brackish, which means half freshwater, half salt water. And so that's why this tank looks completely different. You have coral, calcium, carbonate rock in there. It's to release different ions into the water that are good and healthy for the fish. Over here, we got a discus tank. Discus are one of my favorite fish. They're tall and really thin, so they look like big old pancakes. They're really colorful and every time I see them, it makes me really happy. Some platinum angelfish, and then we even have this really interesting fish right there, which it's a type of pleco that has these really long fins coming off of its body. It's a very quirky fish. This is another pleco down here. It's like a sucker fish, and they're really good for cleaning the algae. They're the uh, bus boys of this cafe, cleaning the glass. There's plecos in almost all of the aquariums in here. It's probably to help take the load off of the guys who have to maintain all these tanks. But down here, this is a CO2 diffuser. Now, what this little contraption is doing is it's releasing very slowly CO2 into the aquarium. And that's because all these plants in here, there's so many plants. The plants absorb the CO2, then of course they transfer it into oxygen and release it up and out of the tank. And that's why sometimes you can see what's called purling, which is when there's like little micro bubbles on the plants and that's the plants actually releasing oxygen once they've used up the CO2. Pretty cool. Photosynthesis. You can see another CO2 diffuser right here and typically they just throw these like in the back of the tank. These little catfish are fantastic, dude. They're just so cool. Look, they got like a cheetah pattern. You see them? So beautiful. Another really cool thing that I bet a lot of people who come here are wondering is why they fill up all the aquariums almost to the brim. The water line is right at the top of the tank. It's because they don't want you to feel like this is an aquarium. They want it to feel like it's a piece of artwork. When the water comes all the way up to the top, it's like an artist using the entire canvas. Imagine if an artist just left a huge section at the top of their canvas blank. It would throw off the whole painting and it would remind you that there is a canvas there in the first place. So more water means more space for more fish and plants to grow all the way to the very top. Over here, they have what they call a showroom. And this is now a fish store because I'm sure so many people are coming in here and getting inspired to want to keep their own fish tank. I love this centerpiece. This is a 360 rectangular tank with a massive lava rock mountain in the center. They just loaded it with Tetras. Different setups, we've got these awesome little ecosystems in jars, more like household sized displays. This is something you could put in your office or at home. This is what someone should be selling at Aquashella because these would sell like crazy. All of this, look at all of this, wow. This is just so cool. In this section, they also have fish for sale. So when you do get your setup, you can come back and actually get live fish or plants. It's truly a remarkable experience what they've created here. Dry goods and supplies and just more displays. Wow, oh my God, look at these. So these are full on polydariums, which a polydarium is an aquarium that has an open top. So the animals can actually live in the upper part and in the lower part of the habitat. And so you can see this moss. This is a really cool setup. We got the smoke coming out. It looks like uh, water is like floating down the river. Some whitewater rapids. And then over here, same thing. You could keep certain reptiles or amphibians in habitats like this. Wow. And the craziest fish in the entire aquarium is right here. I don't know why it's in the back corner. I also don't know why it's in such a small tank, but this is a gargantuan golden Asian arowana. Oh my. This 
is a dragonfish. Another confirmation that dragons are real. This fish looks like a prehistoric water dragon, the arowana. The thing I love about arowanas, they have really sharp features, like their fins and the front of their mouths, the tail, all of their scales, they're really sharp, and it gives it kind of like that dragon-like appearance. And you can see they got another sign, don't touch the dragon. Thanks for watching, guys. You can click right here to watch the next video.